Many of you will know at this point that Xbox has not been having a good past couple of weeks with the CMA blocking Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard, with Redfall launching the way it did, this first party title that ended up being something of an embarrassment for Xbox. And uh, we talked about this Phil Spencer interview in a previous video where he addressed the woe surrounding Redfall, the poor critical reception, and the disastrous launch. And in this video, I want to focus on something else that he mentioned in that interview. This is an interview with Kind of Funny, and he talked on top of the Redfall stuff. He also talked about just the state of Xbox, the future of Xbox, and what his priorities are to try to spruce up the entire Xbox platform. There are two articles that transcribed some of what he said in this interview right here. This is an article from GameSpot, and then here we have Your Gamer. The reason I want to address this is because the point that Phil Spencer makes throughout this interview is that great games won't move the needle that much to make Xbox be at the level of Nintendo and Sony when it comes to gaming market dominance. And it's a stance that I personally question, so I want to dive into this. The title here reads, There's no world where Starfield is so good people sell their PS5s and move to Xbox, Phil Spencer says. And then Eurogamer's title is similar. Phil Spencer, quote, There's no world where Starfield is an 11 out of 10 and people start selling their PS5s. We'll address that in a bit when we get to that moment in the quote. For now, though, I'd like to actually read this bit right here where Phil Spencer said, we're not in the business of out-consoling Sony or out-consoling Nintendo. And that has been showcased by how much emphasis Xbox has been placing on Game Pass. What Xbox is trying to build is the Xbox platform, not just the Xbox consoles. And Game Pass is a huge part of them trying to essentially spread games to as many devices as possible, especially with cloud gaming. It is true that they're not trying to win the console wars per se, but they are still in competition with gaming giants like Sony and Nintendo who are consistently outputting excellent first-party titles. Xbox has been lagging behind on that front, so even if Xbox is going in a different direction than the console wars, it doesn't change the fact that the brand of Xbox and the platform as a whole is suffering because Xbox hasn't been able to output just consistent quality releases. Halo Infinite was supposed to be a major release. That was super rough at launch and even post-launch. Redfall, I don't think, is really going to take off like they want to support it long term but i don't foresee that really happening with just how poor the sales likely are and how poor the reception is surrounding this game a lot is riding on starfield but that's still a big question mark so yes i acknowledge that xbox is not necessarily playing the console wars game or whatever but they're still part of the games industry there's still competition there and Xbox, I don't feel, has been competitive enough, so far at least. He continues, there isn't really a great solution or win for us, and I know that will upset a ton of people, but the truth of the matter is that when you're third place in a console marketplace, and the top two players are as strong as they are, and in certain cases have a discreet focus on doing deals and other things that will, that make being Xbox hard for us as a team, our vision is everyone on console has a great experience, and they feel like a first-class citizen. Now, it's rare for the boss of an entire gaming platform platform to straight up come out and be like, yep, we're in third place. We're losing this so-called war and this console wars idea that I am not a big fan of. But yeah, he does admit that Xbox is definitely still trying to catch up to the other two big companies. And while the sentiment of trying to give everyone on console a great experience and to make them feel like a first class citizen is appreciated, sentiment only takes you so far. But when you look at the execution of releases like Halo Infinite and Redfall, you know, a lot of Xbox players who have been anticipating these kinds of first-party exclusives, they're not feeling like first-class citizens. They feel like they've been duped. The fact that, you know, they were willing to put out Redfall in the state that it was, the fact that they were willing to output the game at 30 FPS only without a 60 FPS performance mode at launch. So many compromises have been made with these first-party releases that it's hard to take the whole idea of making console players feel like first-class citizen as seriously as Phil Spencer's trying to convey it. He continues, I see commentary out there. If you just build great games, this is where I'm like, what are you talking about? If you build great games, everything will turn around, say the commentary out there. 
it's just not true, says Phil, that if we go off and build great games, all of a sudden you're going to see console share shift in some dramatic way. We lost the worst generation to lose in the Xbox One generation where everybody built their digital library of games. 90% of the people every year who walk into a retailer to buy a console are already a member of one of the three ecosystems, their digital library is there. He then provides a more specific example with Starfield, insinuating that even if Starfield turns out to be this incredible massive piece, an 11 out of 10 game, it's not going to move the needle all that much. I see a lot of pundits out there who kind of want to go back to the time where we all had cartridges and discs and every new generation was a clean slate and you could switch the whole console share. That is just not the world that we are in today. There is no world where Starfield is an 11 out of 10 and people start selling their PS5s. That's not going to happen. But that's not what we're asking for you know generally people just want all of the platforms to thrive in the best way possible and then the customers can make whatever choice they want to make based on the games that they're interested in first second third place that stuff doesn't matter to me what matters is that each ecosystem is thriving well enough regardless of where exact figures are at in terms of ranking or whatever and when you look at those two other competing platforms that are definitely much more successful currently you know with every new release that is critically acclaimed claimed that has gone on to sell millions of copies. There's an uptick in sales for consoles as well. And there's just a proven trend that great games are what sell consoles or what sell platforms will get people to subscribe to, you know, things like Game Pass. Like at the end of the day, all of these consoles and platforms, the core purpose is to play games. So of course, having great games on these platforms will incentivize people to go to your platform. I genuinely cannot comprehend this idea that it's not true that if you build great games, everything will turn around. Phil Spencer brings up Xbox One. Guess what was lacking on Xbox One? What differentiated that platform from the other two who went on to do much more successfully? Xbox One lacked great games on the level that Nintendo and Sony were outputting. And I'm not saying that Starfield releasing at an 11 out of 10 score across the board will suddenly make Xbox propel itself to a point where it'll just automatically win the console war or whatever. Again, the whole console war idea doesn't matter. I just want Xbox to do well enough, to thrive to a good enough degree. And Starfield having such a successful launch and having such critical acclaim that it spreads word of mouth and people become attracted to the Xbox ecosystem because you can only play play Starfield on Xbox and Windows or because, you know, Game Pass just gives you a really great deal where you have to pay a low monthly fee to be able to get this huge library of games where games like Starfield come at launch and you just get access to that. Like having a great game like Starfield will absolutely make people look at the platform as a whole. It's consoles, it's services, it's subscriptions, you name it. This to me just kind of sounds like an excuse where because they have been struggling to output great games, they're going, well, you know, we don't need that stuff. We don't need those great games that other platform holders have. We can get by with, you know, just trying to make players feel like first class citizens. And, you know, again, sentiment takes you so far. In a scenario where Xbox is outputting amazing games constantly at a good pace, do you think Phil Spencer will come out there and be like, well, it's great that we're outputting, you know, these 10 out of 10 games, 9 out of 10 games, but these are not the reason why our platform is succeeding. We, these don't matter as much as you think. Do you think Phil Spencer would come out and say that if he and Xbox and Microsoft were in a market dominant position in the gaming landscape? No, because that's not true. Those great games do propel a platform. It does help draw eyes to the platform. It spreads word of mouth when critics give Xbox games 10 out of 10 consistently. Guess what? People will uh, want to buy Xboxes to play these games because, you know, they hear about how amazing they are. That's just what Xbox is lacking right now. You got nothing on the level of God of War Ragnarok, Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, and Breath of the Wild. You know, like Breath of the Wild on its own is, is a console seller, a system seller. Tears of the Kingdom is coming out soon. It looks bigger and better. Halo was supposed to be it, but we know how that turned out. Redfall was supposed to help move the needle a little bit but it launched disastrously, and now so much is riding on Starfield, and that game, being at an 11 out of 10 quality level, would absolutely help. People are not gonna sell their PS5s because that's this whole console war mentality that, again, I'm not into. People might also decide, hey, I got a PS5, now an Xbox seems like it's finally worth getting because there are these games that I'd love to play on this console or at least get the games on PC. Games are what sell gaming platforms, gaming consoles, gaming subscriptions, it's all about the games. That's what that's the whole purpose of this. 
playing great games. Now, Phil Spencer concludes with, the console is the core of the Xbox brand, no doubt, so we will stay focused on making sure that console experience is awesome. Some people want to hold us up and believe that we are a better green version of what the blue guys do, and I'm just going to say there is not a win for Xbox in staying in the wake of somebody else. We have to go off and do our own thing. Again, which harkens to the fact that Phil Spencer is not playing the console war game in terms of pure unit sales of consoles, but he wants to turn Xbox into a platform, uh, both in the cloud and through local gaming, that can be played in as many devices as possible. And that's kind of the main goal. That's all admirable. But at the end of the day, these platforms, these services, these consoles, having those great games, it makes all the difference, I feel. Something else I want to address in this quote is when he says that people want to go back to a time where we all had cartridges and discs and every new generation was a clean slate and that's just not the world that we're in today. I don't think people want their consoles to completely reset everything and they do want that continuity. They do want backwards compatibility and they do want digital purchases to transfer over. But physical medium, I think, is still important and and so if that stuff can be compatible with future generation consoles, like that's a big win. People want it to be a smooth transition from generation to generation. I actually do agree that in this day and age, it's not a good idea to wipe the slate completely clean with a new generation of consoles. Like I have no issues with the vision of the Xbox platform. I just have an issue with the execution of Xbox's first party game releases with all the purchases that they've made so far. Thus far, they have not much to show for it, though that could change. There's still a lot cooking behind the scenes, and I think there's still a lot of potential for Xbox to start outputting a lot of content. It's just now people are shaken by how poor Redfall's release was and are questioning whether, you know, this is the kind of quality bar we can expect from Xbox, and hopefully Xbox will prove us wrong with their future releases. But with an attitude like this, where Phil Spencer saying things like, we want our Xbox community to feel awesome, but this idea that if we just focus more on great games on our console, that somehow we're gonna win the console race, doesn't relate to the reality of most people. It's like it's like the last thing you want to be saying amidst a current circumstance where Xbox is starved for, you know, God of War Ragnarok or Breath of the Wild levels of like console seller or platform seller in the Xbox ecosystem. It just it's such a I don't know, it feels like such a pessimistic outlook. I don't know how you can be in the business of making games and say that great games aren't as important as you think. It's just my feeling, at least. Unless I'm, like, misinterpreting what he's saying. Now, in Eurogamer's article, we do get additional quotes from Phil Spencer talking about just the different direction that they're taking when it comes to console generations and, again, the fact that they're not just trying to confine their games to just the Xbox console. We have this unique vision because we see what creators want to do. Creators want to build games that can meet players on any screen. People play with their friends regardless of whatever screen they're on. And the console is the core of the Xbox brand, there's no doubt. So we will stay focused on making sure that console experience is awesome. And then there's the quote from the GameSpot article. But in the Eurogamer version, it is also added that Phil Spencer said, we have to go off and do our thing with Game Pass, with the stuff we do with X cloud and the way we build our games that's all great but game pass x cloud all that stuff still needs those games now phil spencer does highlight what he believes to be an optimistic future with some of the titles that are coming up and stuff that hasn't even been announced yet stating that we've got starfield coming we've got forza coming we've got hellblade coming and hellblade does look awesome hopefully it plays as well as it looks we've got collections of games. I'm seeing very good Builds of Avowed, the Obsidian Elder Scroll style game that we saw like a CGI teaser of, so we still don't know much about that game. So yeah, it's good to see that there are all of these games that are still cooking. And when it comes to stuff we don't know about yet, stuff that they're going to announce at the showcase, he said, when I look at the showcase, and I'm not going to try and oversell the showcase here i'm very enthusiastic about the showcase we're going to announce some things people haven't seen some new games we're going to give some updates to some things so very vague teases but you know there's certainly quite a lot riding on that showcase so fingers crossed that it really does end up being a knockout. Phil Spencer added, but until you have a controller in your hand and you're smiling from playing our games, none of my words should matter. At the end of the day, the quality of the games at launch is what matters. Redfall certainly proved that. Now, as far as Starfield goes, Phil Spencer did admit that with Redfall, because I was later in development when the acquisition stuff happened, it couldn't be supported as well. Whereas with Starfield, uh, because the game was earlier in development by the time the Xbox acquisition happened, 
Xbox was able to assist with that development a lot more than Redfall. So hopefully that means that Starfield, alongside with the delays and the additional polish that they're trying to add, that really will turn out to be just the most technically sound Bethesda game and that its core creative concepts will be realized in such a way that this will be an amazing game that will be a must buy, will be that you know killer app, that console seller that Xbox currently desperately needs. Like I'm rooting for Xbox, but I'm not rooting for the attitude or the argument of great games aren't as important as you think. Like, no, that they're everything. Great games are everything in the medium of gaming. Or at the very least, that's one man's take. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on Phil Spencer's recent statements surrounding the state of Xbox. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.